Those words marked a historic moment as SpaceX's Falcon 9 booster touched down on a drone ship not in familiar Florida waters, but off the crystal blue coast of the Bahamas on Tuesday, February 18th. I've never actually been to the Bahamas myself, but after witnessing this incredible milestone, it suddenly shot to the top of my travel list. And it should be on yours too if you're a space enthusiast. Imagine standing on those pristine beaches, feeling the warm tropical breeze, when suddenly the peaceful atmosphere is shattered by a sonic boom as a 15-story rocket descends from the heavens. For the first time in history, a rocket launched from one country soared beyond our atmosphere and touched down in another nation's waters. This isn't just another SpaceX achievement. It's a moment that transforms the Bahamas from a tropical paradise into the newest destination in humanity's space journey. The significance of this landing goes far beyond just breaking international boundaries. By establishing this new recovery zone, SpaceX can now maximize Falcon 9's performance with optimal southeast trajectories, carry additional satellites to orbit, and support human spaceflight missions to polar orbits that were previously impossible. Even the unpredictable winter weather becomes less of a concern with these new recovery options. I was truly moved watching the Deputy Prime Minister of the Bahamas speak about what this means for their nation of 400,000 people. The Bahamas is now going beyond sun, sand, and sea, he said with undeniable pride. This partnership doesn't just benefit SpaceX, it opens unprecedented opportunities for Bahamians to participate in the aerospace industry and enhances local STEM education for the next generation of explorers. This is the future unfolding before our eyes, the moment when space travel truly became international in a way we've never seen before. I still get goosebumps thinking about that sonic boom echoing across Bahamian waters, announcing to the world that space is becoming more accessible every day. Welcome to Elon Musk 24 Hours, where we bring you these breathtaking moments in humanity's journey to the stars. Let's dive right in. When I first heard that SpaceX was planning to land a Falcon 9 booster in Bahamian waters, I wasn't sure if it was even possible. The logistics seemed overwhelming. The international agreements, the safety considerations, the precision required, all of it presented challenges that had never been tackled before. But as we've seen time and time again, SpaceX doesn't shy away from the impossible. The landing took place just eight minutes after liftoff. Eight minutes. That's about the time it takes to brew a cup of coffee. And in that span, Falcon 9 went from Florida to space and back down to a floating platform in the Atlantic Ocean off the Bahamas. The drone ship, just read the instructions, waited patiently in the crystal blue waters as the 15-story rocket made its controlled descent. I spoke with Sarah, a local Bahamian tour operator who witnessed the landing from her boat. At first we heard this distant rumble, she told me. Then came the sonic boom. It was like nothing I've ever experienced before. The sound rippled across the water, and for a moment, everything else went silent. Then we saw it, this massive rocket appearing out of nowhere and touching down on that tiny platform. Everyone on the boat erupted in cheers. The sonic boom Sarah mentioned is something I experienced firsthand during the Starship booster catch at the last launch. Let me tell you, it's not just loud, it's physical. You feel it in your chest like your heart skips a beat. It's the kind of experience that reminds you of the raw power involved in these missions. What makes this achievement truly revolutionary is the performance boost it gives to Falcon 9. By launching into an optimal southeast trajectory from Florida, SpaceX can now carry significantly more payload to orbit. This isn't just a marginal improvement. We're talking about capabilities that open doors for missions that were previously impossible. I had the opportunity to speak with Dr. Elena Rodriguez, an aerospace engineer who specializes in rocket trajectories. The southeast trajectory from Florida has always been ideal, she explained, but without a suitable landing zone, SpaceX couldn't fully utilize it. Now with the Bahamas agreement, they've unlocked Falcon 9's full potential. The physics are straightforward. This trajectory requires less energy to reach orbit, which means more energy can be devoted to carrying payload. This new landing zone also provides critical flexibility for human spaceflight missions. Previously, weather conditions could delay crewed launches for days or even weeks. Now, with additional recovery options in the Bahamas, 
the weather constraints are significantly reduced. As someone who's watched countless launches scrub due to weather, I can tell you this is a game changer for mission reliability. The Deputy Prime Minister of the Bahamas understands the significance of this partnership all too well. During his meeting with SpaceX's Vice President of Launch, Kiko Donev, he emphasized how this collaboration puts the Bahamas at the cutting edge of innovation. For a nation of 400,000 people, participating in the aerospace industry represents a monumental shift in their economic landscape. This is huge, he said during their conversation at SpaceX's Florida facility. It's really the beginning of the future. This is something we've been working on for several years. The excitement in his voice was palpable as he continued, we've long been known for tourism. Bahamas is now going beyond sun, sand, and sea. We hope that millions of people will observe from the Bahamas this event over the coming years. But this partnership goes beyond just rocket landings. SpaceX and the Bahamas are working together to enhance local STEM education, creating pathways for young Bahamians to enter the aerospace industry. They've even brought on Aisha, a Bahamian aerospace professional, to help bridge the gap between SpaceX's technical needs and local opportunities. I reached out to Dr. Marcus Thompson at the University of Bahamas, who's helping develop their new aerospace program. 10 years ago, if you told a Bahamian student they could work in space without leaving home, they wouldn't believe you, he told me. Now we're designing curricula specifically tailored to the skills needed for the future of space exploration. Students are already asking how they can get involved. One such student is Jamal, a 17-year-old math prodigy from Nassau. I've always loved rockets, he said, but I never thought I'd see one land in my country. Now I'm determined to be part of the team that makes it happen again and again. The historical significance of this achievement cannot be overstated. This marks the first time in history that a rocket has taken off from one country, gone to space, and landed in another country. It's a milestone that changes how we think about space operations and international collaboration. To put this in perspective, consider how far SpaceX has come. When Elon Musk founded the company in 2002, most experts scoffed at the idea that a private company could successfully reach orbit. Early failures reinforced the skepticism. The first three Falcon 1 launches failed, nearly bankrupting the company. Even after reaching orbit, landing and reusing rockets seemed like science fiction. Yet here we are watching a Falcon 9, the most reliable orbital class rocket ever built, casually land in international waters after delivering its payload to space. As Kiko Donev noted during his meeting with Bahamian officials, this is not a test flight. This is an operational vehicle for America and many other countries. The world depends on Falcon. Safety and reliability remain the highest priorities in this new operational paradigm. The Bahamian government has conducted extensive due diligence to ensure all safety protocols are in place. The landing zone is carefully selected to minimize any risk to local communities or marine environments. Marine biologist Dr. Corinne Maxwell has been monitoring the ecological impact of these operations. SpaceX has been surprisingly thorough in their environmental assessments, she noted. They've mapped migration patterns, studied sound propagation underwater, and established protocols that respect marine sanctuaries. The sonic boom is brief and doesn't appear to cause significant disruption to marine life. For space enthusiasts, this development creates an exciting new travel destination. Imagine taking a boat tour specifically designed to view rocket landings, combining the tropical paradise of the Bahamas with the thrill of witnessing space history. Several tour operators are already developing packages for future landings. Michael Chen, a space tourism analyst, predicts this could generate significant revenue for the Bahamas. We're looking at potentially thousands of space enthusiasts traveling specifically for landing events, he explained. When you factor in accommodations, tours, and other tourism spending, this could represent millions in new revenue, particularly valuable for post-pandemic recovery. The drone ship, Just Read the Instructions, will now be a regular visitor to Bahamian waters. This autonomous vessel, roughly the size of a football field, serves as the landing platform for returning boosters. Its positioning must be precise to the meter, accounting for ocean currents, weather conditions, and the rocket's trajectory. The engineering behind these autonomous drone ships deserves its own recognition. 
Equipped with powerful thrusters that can hold position against ocean currents and advanced tracking systems that communicate with the descending rocket, these vessels represent a marvel of marine engineering. The fact that they can maintain their position with enough precision for a 15-story rocket to land on them is almost as impressive as the rocket landing itself. For the crew that operates these vessels, this new landing zone brings new challenges and experiences. I spoke with Captain Rivera, who oversees drone ship operations. Each landing location has its own personality, he told me. The waters off the Bahamas are generally calmer than our usual Atlantic recovery zones, but tropical weather systems can develop quickly. We've adapted our procedures accordingly and trained extensively for these new conditions. The Falcon 9 booster that made this historic landing has now added International Traveler to its resume. This particular booster has already completed multiple missions, demonstrating the reliability of SpaceX's reusable rocket technology. After landing, it will be transported back to Florida for refurbishment and preparation for its next mission. Looking ahead, this new capability opens possibilities beyond just commercial satellite deployments. NASA's Artemis program, aimed at returning humans to the moon, could benefit from the enhanced performance margins. Future Mars missions could launch heavier payloads. Even space tourism ventures might leverage these new trajectories to reduce costs. The significance extends beyond just SpaceX and the Bahamas. This achievement demonstrates a model for international cooperation in space operations that other countries and companies might follow. As space activities increase globally, establishing frameworks for cross-border operations becomes increasingly important. For the Bahamas, this represents just the beginning of their space journey. Officials have expressed interest in developing further space capabilities, potentially including a spaceport for smaller launch vehicles or facilities for space research. As we witness this historic evolution in space operations, it's worth reflecting on how quickly the extraordinary becomes ordinary. Just a decade ago, landing rockets was considered impossible. Five years ago, landing on drone ships was cutting edge. Now we're casually discussing international booster landings as if they're routine. Yet we shouldn't let familiarity diminish our appreciation for these achievements. Each landing represents thousands of engineering hours, countless innovations, and the relentless pursuit of a future where space is accessible, sustainable, and international. The next time you see that bright streak in the sky, whether from Florida or the Bahamas, Remember that you're witnessing the ongoing transformation of humanity into a spacefaring civilization. And now that transformation has taken another significant step forward, crossing international boundaries and bringing new nations into the space community. So, would this historic achievement persuade you to visit the Bahamas? I know it has certainly moved it to the top of my travel list. There's something magical about witnessing space history while standing on those pristine beaches feeling the rumble of a sonic boom across the water as a testament to human ingenuity. This milestone represents more than just a technical achievement. It symbolizes how space exploration continues to bring nations together, creating opportunities that extend far beyond the launch pad. From STEM education initiatives for young Bahamians to new tourism experiences for space enthusiasts, this partnership opens doors that were previously unimaginable. If you enjoyed learning about this historic SpaceX landing, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Would you travel to the Bahamas to witness a rocket landing? Should I make the trip and bring you along through a first-hand vlog experience? Let me know. Don't forget to like this video if you found it informative, share it with fellow space enthusiasts, and subscribe to Elon Musk 24 hours for more breaking news and in-depth coverage of humanity's journey to the stars. Hit that notification bell so you never miss another SpaceX milestone. Thank you for joining me on this exploration of SpaceX's latest breakthrough. Until next time, keep looking up. The future of space is becoming more international, more accessible, and more extraordinary every day. Those words marked a historic moment as SpaceX's Falcon 9 booster touched down on a drone ship not in familiar Florida waters, but off the crystal blue coast of the Bahamas on Tuesday, February 18th. I've never actually been to the Bahamas myself, but after witnessing this incredible milestone, 
it suddenly shot to the top of my travel list. And it should be on yours too if you're a space enthusiast. Imagine standing on those pristine beaches, feeling the warm tropical breeze, when suddenly the peaceful atmosphere is shattered by a sonic boom as a 15-story rocket descends from the heavens.